So for a number of years, I've been really keen to buy one of the Stumac digital nut slot engagers, but I've never really wanted to spend over $200 Australian on one. So recently when I discovered that you could buy a similar digital gauge off places like eBay or Amazon, I thought I'd have a go at making one myself, with the use of a 3D printer, of course. So let's take a look at how it's all gonna work. So to make this project, there's two parts that I'll need. The first is the digital gauge, um, and the second is the block that it sits on. So this is the one that I found on eBay. Um, obviously on Amazon and other places, you'll find uh, similar gauges. At the time I bought this one a few months ago, I think it was $32 Australian. So let's have a look. Now I've no idea um, the brand, but I think they're all uh, probably pretty similar when you buy them from those sort of places. Um, we can see at the bottom, well, on off, let's turn it on. We've got the, um, the part that comes out on the spring to measure the distance. Um, we've got inches and millimeters that we can use and then zeroing it out. So um, this should work perfectly for um, what I'm gonna need. And certainly the increments that it goes to um, should be fine as well. So the second part is the block that it's gonna sit on. And I've played around with my 3D printer um, designing different blocks of different shapes and sizes. Now on the Stumac gauge, the block is made out of brass, I'm pretty sure. So this is one of my concerns that printing it out of plastic, this is gonna be a lot lighter um, than a brass block. And when it sort of you know, sits over the strings, um, hopefully this will be stable enough um, for, uh, for it to be used. I made these ones a bit wider, so obviously that is where the, the fret um, will go through. I kind of made this a bit wider just to make it a bit more stable. Um, but I sort of found that on this, this width, there wasn't enough room on the outsides to, to push the, the string down um, to get the, the string deflection. So I then moved to the smaller block sizes. Um, these are all, I mean, the whole sort of going through the middle for the gauge is probably, yeah, you can see there it's different on all of these, just as I was playing around with different measurements. Um, we've got sort of this section here, which is um, which is a bit wider, so that kind of will sit um, about halfway down, and then the the narrow part will sort of come through the the bottom part. And I think there's a stop. Yeah, I've designed a stop in there to um, for this part to sit on. So these two here were the the shape and size that I I decided to use in the end. We can even see on this one um, I printed it a bit a bit too small, so I drilled it out just to, to see um, what size I would need. Um, and I think this one here was probably the, the most recent one until I, I printed the final ones. So the final block that I ended up making is this one here with all the correct um, dimensions, sizes, um, hole, diameter, etc. This one here, the radius on the bottom, we obviously need a, a radius. Otherwise, if it's flat, um, it would rock on a, on a fretboard. So I've made this to, I think it was about seven inches, uh, which means that any fretboard that I put it on um, there will be enough uh, clearance on the on the curve. So this is the one um, that I am going with. So the gauge will sit um, through the bottom there, and then this is the part here that will uh, sit on the string. And you can see there that sort of can be pushed down. Now the issue with this at the moment is that on the end it's got a, a rounded surface. Now the Stu Mac one, when I've looked at the pictures, it has a, a, um, a flat surface on the bottom, obviously to sit on the string. There's two options that I've got. One is that I could sand or sort of grind that away to make it flat. However, what I decided to do was print some little stoppers that will fit on the end. So I've printed a, a range of them just to, to have a few spares. So the idea is that that will sit nicely over the end and then um, we've got a, a flat surface to, to sit on the string to depress it for the string deflection over the fret. So let's put it together to see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. So we've got the little um, cap on the end. And that will sit nicely over the fret. Um, and over the three strings. So let's get a guitar out, put it over the strings and see how it works. Now there is one issue that uh, I have discovered and I've got a solution for how to overcome that. So let's have a look now. So this is a nut that I rough cut and shaped the other day and I actually used this little mini vise, which I designed and 3D printed as well. 
Um, and I've got a video on this one too, so you may have already seen it, but if not, you can check out the video on how I made and used this uh, mini um, vise to um, hold and shape and cut nuts um, without damaging your fingers. Okay, so here's the issue that I've found so far, and you should be able to see it here. As I put the gauge down, um, you can see what happens that the gauge itself is pushing the string down. So if you watch on the side, the string shouldn't really be deflecting when we've got the gauge in place. So we can see that it is moving down. Um, and I have discovered that I can let it go. So uh, obviously it's not gonna be as sturdy as a, a brass base, um, but it's working pretty well from that point of view. So we'll see if we get this in shot. Let's turn it on. Go to millimeters, zero it out. So if we push it down, okay, so if I zero it out there, and then it should be if I push um, the strings down on both sides, and this is quite difficult to do <laughs> the way I'm filming it. If we push the strings down on both sides, it should deflect more and we really can't see any deflection on the string. So that's how you would obviously use it. Um, put the, the gauge on the string, the string should stay in the place where it is. We zero it out to zero. And then if we push down on the strings, um, we can get the, the distance um, from the fret to the bottom of the string. And as you can see there, um, the string is really just being pushed down um, pretty much to the fret. So we need to change that. Um, and realizing that we have too much um, tension pushing down in the shaft. So um, we'll take the, the top section apart and we'll see what we can do to release the, the tension um, or the force that is pushing the central shaft down on the string because really we don't want any force going in that direction. So let's open up the back and find out what's going on uh, in the inside. Okay, so as we can see here, as I, so I'm just pushing up on the, the stopper at the bottom. As we push it up, we can see we've got this spring here, which is um, applying the force to, uh, to push it down. So I think what we can do is if, um, if I remove this string, it's just hooked on that side and then screwed on the other side, there will be no force applied uh, to the, the central shaft, which means that it will sit over um, the string without pushing it down, it re will really just be the weight of the shaft and gravity pushing it down. And I think there'll be enough string tension um, to prevent that. And then we should be able to use the gauge um, as I want it to. So let's uh, take that spring off and see how we go. Okay, that screw doesn't want to move. And the more I'm trying, I think I'm just stripping the thread. So I think we'll just take the, um, the spring off from the top and we can just let it hang loose in there. It's actually shouldn't get in the way. And now we can see there as we move it up and down, um, there is no tension at all. So let's put it back together and put it back on the guitar and see if it's made a difference. So let's see how we go now. We'll try some of the thicker strings to start with and see if we get a deflection. There may be a slight deflection. I'll have to look back on the, the camera later. So let's try the other ones. So they might be moving a little bit. I'll have to check back on the video, but certainly uh, it's not happening to the extent it was before. Now I'm not sure how this Dumac ones work since I've never used one, but obviously this one, we've taken away the, the spring pressure. Um, so it really is just 
the, the weight of the shaft that might be pushing it down. So if there is a little bit of, of string movement like that, um, we might just have to take that into account um, when I'm measuring and, and cutting the slots. But let's see how it will work now. When I've rough cut these uh, string slots, I've left them um, reasonably high. So let's have a look and see what the gauge is measuring them at. So let's run through them all now and see where they're all sitting. We want to go from probably 0 0.6 as a final height for the E string um, and then the, the high E um, probably 0 0.25 mil. So that's probably where we want that one. All right, because of the curve of the fretboard, I have to hold it on the high E. It's not going to stay in place. So, so we're going to reach around the camera to get this string down. Actually, I'll just move it to have a look. There we are, 0.56. All right, so we might have a go at cutting one of the, the string slots and seeing if we can get it to the right height um, using this gauge. Okay, that seems to be working quite well. So I'm gonna continue on cutting the rest of these string slots, and then I'll take the nut out and give it a bit of a, um, a final sand and shape and get it back in and it should be done. Now, incidentally, the nut files that I'm using are the Stu Mac nut files. And I actually found this file online to 3D print the backings for the files. So if you've ever used these, especially the, the thinner ones, you know, they can move a bit. Um, and these are just 3D printed backings. Now it was something I was actually planning to design or thinking about doing myself, but I found them online um, and they're working really well. So you can see there with the finer ones that have obviously got a lot more flex in them, um, it really stiffens them up and makes it a lot easier to use. And it prints in a little container as well. Now I can't remember where I found these, but I'll look it up and leave the link in the description. So if this is something you want to print as well, um, I would certainly recommend it. So I'll keep chipping away at cutting these string slots, but if this is something that you are interested in, I'll put the file for the block on my Colts 3D page. So you can download that and you know it may work for a gauge that you can get access to, or you might need to modify this file. Um, or <laughs> as I lose the, uh, the end, um, you might wanna just design one yourself. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.